In light of looking at the past to illuminate the present, I would like to honor a graduate of Oxford and an Oxford Don who I really like. Um, and that is the great Arnold Toynbee. Arnold Toynbee studied at Balliol College, and I'm speaking about Arnold J. Toynbee, not the great economist of the 19th century who also has that same name. Arnold Toynbee wrote an essay in 1947 called, Civiliz he, he wrote a series of essays in a book called Civilization on Trial. One of the things that he said in that book is that when civilizations are confronted with challenges, they tend to respond in different ways, and their responses will determine uh, their success or their failures. But he said one of the common characteristics of a civilization when they're under great stress is to find what he called bugbears, people to blame for their problems. And he mentions now the capitalist West, it uses communism. He said, in the divided world of 1947, communism and capitalism are each performing this insidious office for one another. Whenever things go awry in circumstances that se seem ever more intractable, we tend to accuse the enemy of having sown tares in our field and thereby implicitly excuse ourselves for the faults in our own husbandry. This is, of course, an old story. Centuries before communism was heard of, our ancestors found their bugbear in Islam. As lately as the 16th century, Islam inspired the same hysteria in Western hearts as communism in the 20th century. It's very interesting in this same essay that he actually argues that Islam is also going to become a problem again. And he addresses what is very fascinating to me the fact that Islam is up against the wall vis-a-vis -vis Western civilization. And because it's up against the wall, it responds uh, in one of two ways. He calls one of the responses Herodianism and the other zealotism. Herodianism, he said, is mimicry. It's attempting to find the secret of the people that have conquered you and to become like them. This is the Japanese response to the post-World War situation where the Japanese now have better rock and roll than the Americans. Uh, they, ha they can imitate Elvis Presley. Even their uh, prime minister, when he came to America, he wanted to go to Graceland. That was the first place that he asked George Bush to go to, and he actually did go and visit because he apparently is a great fan of Elvis. They have some of the finest classical musicians. This is very common for conquered peoples to imitate uh, those who have conquered them. This is why um, Native Americans are often the last people wearing cowboy uh, clothes, literally, uh, wearing the Levi's and, and the cow. They will embellish it with traditional beads and things, but this is, this is something that happens. But he says the other response is zealotism, which is an attempt to fall back on the past in this rigid, nostalgic structure. And he's, he identifies three places where he feels that this will be the biggest uh, problem for the West in dealing with the Muslims. Uh, Saudi Arabia, Af uh, Afghanistan, and Yemen. And it's quite stunning that he did this in 1947, and I would attribute that to the Oxford education. <laughs> so uh, we're looking forward to such prescient uh, understandings of the future from these young uh, Muslims that are coming out of here. But one of the things that he says is that the problem with Herodianism is that the mimicry is always pale imitation. They can never become... Uh, really as good as those that they're trying to imitate. And he says the problem with zealotism is that it is invariably a dead end and it comes to a failure. 